Okay, we want to just take a look at how we can start setting up this problem. Your roommate, Leticia, offers to buy groceries for you and your other roommate, Jill. So there's three people involved. Usually, you will see, like, Leticia forgot to save individual receipts. Remember that your groceries were cheaper than half of her groceries. So your groceries were in um, given in terms of her groceries and Jill's groceries were given in terms of your groceries so one of them is they're all dependent upon that one so in terms of English you've got a subject and a predicate subject and predicate the original subject is the one that um, everything else depends on so Leticia if we let Leticia the bill um, Leticia's bill would be X, then we can get your bill and then Jill's bill. And these should be all in terms of the stuff that's already defined, in this case X. So your bill, your groceries were $1.50 cheaper than half of her groceries. So $1.50 cheaper, you subtract $1.50 from it. But half of her groceries, if she had X, then half of her groceries would be one half X, and minus $1.50 would be $1.50 cheaper than half of her groceries. Now, Jill's groceries were $10.50 more than your groceries. So your groceries are here, And Jill's were 1050 more than. So if we add 1050 to your groceries, you'll get Jill's bill. So we now have three variable expressions for the different bills for the three people that got groceries. The total is 119.50. So if you add all those up, you should get that total. Then you can solve for X. Once you have X, how much did you and Jill owe? You plug X back into your bill and Jill's bill, and then you can get the two values that you and Jill owe to Leticia. Hope this makes sense. It's a very common structure where they say X in terms of Y, let Y equal your variable, and then you can solve for the X. Or A in terms of B, Leticia in terms of yours, the in terms of set that to be your variable. And then the first one is more of a direct translation. The other question was this one. The solution is, so we have x equals 3. We have y equals 1 plus z. And we don't know about z. z is z. That's not very useful. From this first equation, if we were to just subtract the z to the left, we have x equals 3 y equals z, and nothing really about z. Sorry, y minus z equals 1. So in terms of a matrix, x equals 3 would be 1x, no y's, no z's, and 3. y minus z equals 1 would be no x, 1y, minus 1z equals 1. And then we don't have anything about z. That is a row of zeros. So hopefully this helps you understand the setup of part 2a. Okay, excellent.